Pat Love, back from Love Healing Hearts, here to read one verse to you. I am going, no, I think I'm going to read three. Okay, this is James chapter one, starting from verse six to eight, just three verses. But let him ask in faith, it's whatever you ask of God. Let him ask in faith, not wavering. Wavering means to flippy-flop back and forth. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. So if you have, a, uh, if you have to pick from this and this, and you're... Thinking of righteousness, I have to make something different. Okay, here's a phone. This is righteousness. This is sin. And here you are in the middle trying to decide which way you're going to face. Are you going to face this way for unrighteousness? This way for righteousness? Which way are you going to face? Okay, so here you are looking back and forth and you're trying to figure out, you know, what you're going to do. Well, what ends up happening is you get torn. It's like a tug of war. You lean this way, then you lean that way, and you lean that. You can't make up your mind because you want the things of God. Oh, Lord, glory to your holy name. God is a good God. I love the Lord. I love the Lord. He heard my cry. And then you're over here and you're like, uh, getting in the mood, hey. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I, I gotta be righteous. I gotta be holy. I gotta be sanctified because I want to go up when the rapture comes. I don't want to be left behind, right? But let the phone ring. Hi, baby. <laughs> Oh, stop. Now, you know, we can't be seeing each other. I'm trying to be saved. What time? No, 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 I can't. Because you're torn. So what ends up happening is you're, you become stagnant because you think you're moving because you're believing in God as far as you think you are. But then you're also longing for Mr. Big Stuff or you're looking for Dr. Feel Good or whatever his name or her name is, depending upon if you're male or female, and you're caught up in this thing that pulls at you, pulls at your groin, pulls at your heart, pulls at your mind. You go to sleep and you think of those lips touching your lips and you think of those hands touching your body parts. And Oh, baby, baby. Let's get it on, right? Well, your mind is there. But then you got the Holy Spirit tugging at your heart. And now you got, I got two lovers. And your two lovers are the ways of sin, what you're supposed to leave behind and repent from, and righteousness and the things of God. So instead of, this is sin now, okay, instead of going all the way and doing a and about face, and your back is to your sin, you're this way, and it's like, mm, stop it, oh, stop, stop tugging at me, but then you got the Lord, mm. and what ends up happening is you go like this, you're back and forth, you're back and forth, you walk over here a little bit, and then you dabble back over here a little bit. And you're back over here. And then you're back over here. And before you know it, you get to the point where you're not getting anywhere. This ain't getting you anywhere over here. God is pulling at you. But your faith isn't strong enough to really obey at the expense of everything else. So you're caught in the middle. You're caught in the middle of your two lovers. Hi, Lord. Hi, baby. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, come on. Don't mess with me. Oh. And you're torn. Constantly torn. Do you know what that ends up happening? You know what ends up happening from that? When God says, don't think that any man will receive anything from God. Because your faith, 
Your faith is the thing that drives you. What you believe in the most, what is in your heart, what you treasure the most, is what's going to move you, baby. And if God is not where your faith really is, and your longing is where your faith is, the desires of your body is what drives you, you're going to obey the things of the flesh. Do you hear what I'm saying? That's why the Bible says, walk not in the flesh, but walk in the spirit. Be filled with the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So what ends up happening is when you keep teeter-tottering between the two, God starts getting upset and he starts saying, hey, my spirit is not going to cohabit with sin. So the word says, my spirit will not always strive with you. you got to make up your mind. And while you're caught in the middle, you're lukewarm. And if you stay lukewarm, I will spew you out of my mouth. That's in Revelations. So you have to be very careful about what you do because what you will end up becoming is a thing that I refer to as stagnant water. Now there's a scripture in the Old Testament that says, drink water from your own cistern. Don't drink from a broken cistern. When you drink from a messed up well, jacked up well that's full of contaminants and the water is not running or the water in a brook is not running, it's just sitting there stagnant. It's not going to the right, it's not going to the left. The current can't move that nasty water. It gets filthier and filthier and it, it, it develops larvae and mosquitoes come out of it. I'm trying to help you see this, so picture this with me. It develops larvae and it stinks like sulfur, like sewer water. It is rancid. It's nasty. Nobody wants to drink from it. But what happens, that's the way your spirit becomes when you're torn between two opinions and you don't move either way. You make a choice. When you don't go God's way, you've already made your choice. But when you're dabbling in God and dabbling in sin and dabbling in God and dabbling in sin and holy, holy, holy and ooh-wee baby, you're torn. You are torn. Your mind is not made up. You're double-minded. That means you're unstable in all your ways. Well, what ends up happening is you begin <clears throat> to become rancid in your heart in your mind, your attitude, everything starts to sour. Everything uh, just becomes contaminated and, 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 and you almost begin to, to decay. There's a decaying process that happens in your spirit. It's very dangerous because you're not aware of it. It's like, okay, I've been big all my life. And when I gain weight, most heavy people will say this, when they gain weight, they don't see it. But when they lose weight, it's more obvious. So what you're doing is you're gaining. When you're not picking up momentum with God, you're picking up momentum with sin. And you're getting more and more contaminated and your living water becomes stagnant water and you are rancid and you stick to high heaven. And God said, let not that man think he'll get anything from me. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because your mind's not made up. You're caught between two opinions. You got two lovers. And God ain't playing second fiddle to nobody. He said, I am a jealous God. You shall have no other gods beside me. So if you're not ready to put that God to the side, your lover, lay it to the side, and you rather lay with that lover, God will eventually lift his spirit from off of you. And you do not want to hear the words, Ichabod, the glory of God has departed. You don't want to hear that, or the presence of God has departed. You don't want to hear that in your life. Trust me on that. It is a horrible thing to feel the loss of the presence of God in your life or the anger of God and then he's gone. No, no, no. You don't want to take that chance because then you are vulnerable to every every element, every little scheme Satan has in your life. Your covering has evaporated because you have been double-minded. Now, when I say all that to say, 
I'm trying to get you to understand this. Stagnant water is poisonous. A stagnant life will kill you eventually. It will make you sick psychologically, emotionally, mentally, physically. Because what happens is it it changes it 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 messes up your your choices, your decision making. It all becomes cloudy. You ever try to swim in murky water? You can't see. It's all dark. It's all cloudy. Well, that's the way your life becomes in stagnant water. Stagnant water is not crystal clear and clean and smells sweet. C stagnant water is, is full of, of bacteria. It's red cloudy. It's moldy. It's all kind of mess up in there. And it it it, it stops your, your vision. It clouds your vision. You're not able to see clearly. Listen to what I'm saying. I know I'm talking a lot, but I'm really trying to help you understand this. When you can't see where you're headed, when you can't see clearly, you can't see where you're at. You can't even see how you're messing up because you're so caught up in the filth of the contaminants of sin that all your choices become ludicrous. I mean, even a child can look at you and say, why do you act so stupid? Why are you hanging out? Why are you doing? Why do you keep? Because you can't see. You have been so blinded by your passions, by your decisions, by the rottenness of sin, the stagnation of going nowhere. Going nowhere, just teeter-tottering. And it gets cloudier and cloudier in your life. And you end up making worse worse decisions. I mean, your decisions get worse from worse to worse to worse. Your life just deteriorates right there before your eyes. Your, your conscience becomes seared. And what that means is the things that you were sensitive about, the Holy Spirit can let you know that's wrong. No, don't do that. You'd be like, put a check in your spirit. No, I don't think I need to mess with that. Thank you, Lord. And, and you obey. But when you get to the point where your conscience is seared, you don't worry about what he thinks anymore. You stop fearing him. You stop caring what he wants. And what you want becomes of the utmost importance to you. And you slowly, through your actions, turn your back on God. And you go your way. And you do your thing. That's a dangerous place to be. Think about where you're headed. Where are you going? Who are you going with? What's so important to you that you're willing to risk your relationship with God? Is it a nut? A nut lasts a second. What the heck are you thinking? You could risk all of eternity for a friggin' nut? Stop it. Think. Think now. Put two and two together. What are you wasting your life on? What are you wasting your time on? Is it a good gamble? Huh? What are you wasting your time on? Come on now, wake up, smell the coffee. Don't let the devil drag you down. Don't let him pull you by your body parts and those little stupid desires. You can get those desires down the road when you're married and you're doing it right. Leave all that crap alone now. Get all caught up, tangled up in God. Please. Because as long as you play two against the middle, you will get nowhere. You'll go nowhere but down into a pit. A pit of disillusionment. A pit of disappointment. A pit of sin a pit of confusion, a pit of self-destruction. Stop it now. That, that's your warning. Stop now while you can. Today is the day of salvation. Call on the Lord while he may be found in the name of Jesus. Please open your eyes, wake up, and turn back to God in the name of Jesus. Please.